crazy. Good morning. Good morning, friends. Shannon, girl. Man, I was like sitting there reading this morning. What was that? I think my computer just talked to me. I was sitting there reading this morning and the way my mouth flew open when I realized how timely our God is, it is insane. Like he net you the more I get closer to God, the more surprised I am by how faithful he is. Isn't that crazy? Because I should be like, okay, yeah, God, I've seen you do this a million times in my life, but every time it knocks me flat on my feet. Like every single time he is so on time. Oh, Jessica, God is so on time, girl. This is, I literally had tears in my eyes by how on time this message is because I almost could not sleep last night because of how much hate I got for the video that I posted yesterday about spiritual warfare. And then I get up this morning and I read what we're about to go over this morning and oh my goodness, God could not have been more on time. Like I was just like, God, you just blow me away every time. Like every time you never cease to show me something. And it is just, I love God. I love walking through life with him. I just, man, he's so good. Like, yes, you did. You said that this morning in our chat and I, like I didn't click on it. It's going to be so good, Yvonne. Like I didn't click on it because um, I try to like, um, I try to, anyway, I try to be timely. It doesn't always work in the mornings. Like, it doesn't matter how early I wake up. The enemy's always going to try to distract me. But y'all, when I tell you this morning, my jaw literally dropped. I was reading scripture and my jaw literally was like, when I read what we're going to go over today and how timely it is. Yes. And like, I know that people are hating on the monster energy drink and y'all like, for, I have multiple things to say about that, but I, like, I will not be drinking them anymore, mostly because it offended so many people. Y'all, I got so many messages yesterday. It was crazy. And I was like, the first, the, the thing that was going through my mind was, yes, okay, yeah, I get it. Like, I've never even looked into that. Like, I've never even looked, like, at the can, like, because I'm of God. Those things don't affect me. Like, I mean, if we're going to say that we can't drink monster energy drinks, then Alani New is also out because they literally have a cup that says witch's brew. Like, I mean, you we live in a fallen, simple world, guys. No, no company is going to represent Christ if they're not of Christ. Like, we can't expect Christians to act like Christians. Now, um, yes, I, I <laughs> exactly. I mean... It is, it's just a drink. Like, to me, it's just a drink. It's always been just a drink to me. And the fact that the enemy went wild. How timely is it that I was drinking that drink that I did not even purchase? Did not even purchase. It was given to me. Like, I was literally drinking it forever. Like, I like that whole afternoon I had been sipping on it. Didn't even buy it. How timely is it that the enemy knew that that was going to distract people from hearing the truth about how he deceives people? I mean, really, like, that is, if we don't have a better example about how the enemy will use anything and everything to distract us from what he's trying to, to do, like, that is, that's it. That's what the whole message was about. Like, I, like, we literally couldn't go anywhere. If we're going to say we can't support any company who's not of Christ, and you definitely can't order off of Amazon. Don't ever order off of Amazon because that is the most corrupt leadership on the face of this planet. Um, we probably should actually not be on TikTok right now because we are supporting them monetarily, and they're not a Christian platform. We shouldn't support Meta, so get off of Facebook and Instagram because you're putting money in their pocketbooks, and that. <laughs> We all know what their agenda is. Like, the enemy is everywhere, y'all. He is he is roaring like a lion seeking who to devour. And when I started looking into the monster energy drink stuff, there is, like, a lot of coin. There's not, there's not, there's a lot of, like, could be this, could be something else, 
could be, like, when I started actually researching it, Monster never, like, that I found came out and did a, like, a actual rebuttal on it. So, they never said, like, no, this is what we mean. Like, they took off the symbols that meant the F word. That was what one of the things the lady was saying. Um, I know Christians that have, that claim to know Christ that dropped the F word pretty frequently. So, if we're going to say that makes it demonic, then we have to say that every person that curses is also demonic. So, like, y'all, we can't, this, I'm so passionate about this, and I think I lost, like, a lot of followers yesterday, which is fine, because God will weed out the people who are not for you. We have to believe that he's sovereign over that, but y'all, like, it, like, we live in a fallen, sinful world, and if that was what you were focused on through that whole message, then the enemy did exactly what I was saying that he was going to do, and it was distract you from the truth of the message. Also, I had another person comment on the fact that I said God is not the author of confusion, and they were telling me that I needed to check the context of that scripture. Guys, that's a statement in scripture. God is not the author of confusion. And yes, he is talking about the church. Uh, or Yeah, like it, he's talking to the church of Corinthians when he's talking about that. And he's talking about prophesying and all of that kind of stuff. And and while, yes, like that is the context, we are the church. Like God is not the author of confusion in the church. We are the church. It's not a building. It's not, it's not a, um, it's not a place. It's a person and, and we belong to the church. And so God is not the author of confusion because we are of the church. Like he's the one that reveals scripture to us. And, and in the Bible, when God has caused confusion, like when he separated the languages, when they were building the tower of Babel and different things like that, they were not doing, they were not working for for God. Like it was, it was anti God. Like it, everything that was happening was against God. And so he doesn't confuse his people. He doesn't confuse his church. He is not the author of confusion for those who are in him and walk with him. He can't do that. Like he can't, he can't not. He can't confuse people he says and promises to bring clarity to, right? And and peace to and all of that kind of stuff. And so, um, anyways, um, no, like I, I get so much hate, like it, it, and sometimes it affects me more than others. Yesterday, the reason I was so down and those in my Patreon know, like I immediately messaged them because I was like, need prayers immediately. The enemy's attacking. Like I, I set out and I battled y'all. I sat on my porch for 20 minutes yesterday. 20 minutes battling posting that video about spiritual warfare because I was like, God, I know it's coming. As soon as I do it, I know that it's coming. And wouldn't you know, wouldn't you know? And I don't know. I, I have no idea why, like, God didn't convict me to put the can down. Um, Probably because he knows that I'm of him and he's not worried about it because I walk with his spirit. So he knows that turning a can upside down, whether that's the phi symbol for the Greek or whether they really did intend for it to be an upside down cross or whatever, that has no meaning in my life because I'm of Christ. Like, there's not a symbol that can put me not of Christ because I belong to him. I walk with him every single day. And y'all, like, it's just, we have to understand that, that, and, and like the first thought that went through my head was when people started like unfollowing me and stuff, I said, I knew like one day it was going to come. Like everybody wants to be on your team until you do one thing and then they don't. And that's just the culture that we live in. It's cancel culture. And the culture that we live in, if you're going to pursue Jesus, just realize that you're going to be canceled probably at least every other day because the truth of scripture is convicting and people don't like that, whether they say they walk with Jesus or not. Like we don't like to hear truth. The enemy is attacking. We are at spiritual war. And it's just so crazy to me that um, that is exactly the moment that I was holding that drink when we we're talking about that. So anyways, I just think it's crazy. Like, I just think I was like, wow. And then this message, like, y'all, I woke up. Um, actually, you know, I told y'all I'm waking up at 3 a.m. Well, I forgot to tell my husband that I was doing that. And so he was concerned for me. He, he came in the living room when I was up at like 4 and had been up for an hour. And he was like, are you okay? <laughs> and I said, yeah, I'm fine. He was like, it's 3 a.m. <laughs> and I said, I know I have to do my Bible study before I work out. And he was like, okay. <laughs> so anyway, um, I am, I'm from Mississippi. 
I'm not letting it get me down. And it's so crazy, y'all. Like, it's so crazy the fact that that happened in, in the exact, like, God is so timely. Right when we're about to read First John chapter 3, verse 11 through 14, like, he's so timely. He's so on time. And I'm like, God, thank you for renewing my spirit through the persecution. Because if y'all had seen the messages that I got, um... Oh, even like off of the comments, like it, it just never ends. And so anyways, I have to finish my notes on, on these scriptures because I was like so floored that I didn't even finish typing them. There are no coincidence. God proved your point for you. He sure did. He proved my point for me. And you know, like, like the imagery of Satan is everywhere because He's just everywhere right now. He's not bound. He's free and loose. Like the imagery of Satan is literally everywhere. Like he he goes about in this world seeking those who to devour. And the fact that an energy drink, we know more about how that represents Christ than we do the actual scriptures and memorizing scriptures is very concerning. And I'm not specifically talking about the, the people who were commenting on my post. I don't know them personally. They can make and quote the entire book of Romans. I don't know. But we focus so much on anti-God. And we don't focus enough on God and who he is. And like memorizing his scripture and knowing his voice. And, and it's just crazy to me how God works. So anyway, we're going to talk. It's a relationship. It so is. It's a relationship. Um, and so we're going to talk today about all of it. And I, I am on fire. God is working. He is moving, y'all. I am like, oh, I was so down this morning. I won't lie. I was still down this morning because I was like, God, like, why, why? Like, why holding a drink? Like, why, why, why? And then I read this chapter and I was like, woo! That's exactly why. Because God is always on time. And he always teaches us a lesson that we need to learn. And y'all... Through this process of becoming an influencer or whatever, I have learned that the more truth that you speak that doesn't align with our Americanized feel-good gospel, the worst hate you're going to get. And most of it's going to come from people who claim to be Christians, which is terrifying because the enemy has us blinded. God has to reveal his truth to us. Like it, if you remember my... um. If you remember my Bible verse from last week that I memorized, it was Proverbs 1 verses, Proverbs 1 verse 23. And it was, if you turn at my rebuke, behold, I will pour my spirit out to you and I will make my words known to you. We can't even understand the word of God without God revealing it to us. Like we can't even sit with him and read his scripture and understand what it says without God revealing his words to us. And so it's so important to understand that even those who claim to be Christian, but attack you for speaking actual truth in the scripture, it's got to be God that reveals that to them. And so, um, will I say things that are wrong at some point? Probably so. And will I correct those things? Yes, I will. I told y'all, if you follow me and not Jesus, you're going to be very disappointed because I'm a sinful person just like you are. But, but y'all like, it's just, it's so good when God shows stuff to us. Anyway, we're going to get started. I'm going to start rambling because I'm just, I'm so pumped up. And like when he showed me that this morning, I was like, what? God, you're so good. So, um, this morning we're going to be in first John chapter three, verses 11 through 15. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to pray and we're going to get started. Okay. Dear God, I mean, you literally blow my mind, like your faithfulness and your truth and your word. I mean, you are just a good God. And I know I know that because I'm so on fire for you right now, the attack is already coming. Prepare the way for that already because you already have. Prepare my heart for that. Help me to meditate on your words so that I know how to combat the schemes of the devil with scripture and with truth of who you are. Because God, we claim and we know that you say you're not the author of confusion for your church and in your church. And we are your church, which is so cool because you're going to give us clarity in seasons where the world is trying to confuse us. So God, be with us today. Make your words known to us. Pour your spirit out. God, hide me behind the cross. Let nothing that comes out of my mouth be of me, but all of you. God and you alone receive the glory for that in Jesus name. Amen. Okay, you guys, let's get started because this is going to be so 
good. Okay, so if you're catching up, if you just got on, because several just got on, we are going to talk about 1 John chapter 3, verses 11 through 15. And this is not a feel-good scripture. It's really not. It's really not a feel-good scripture. Even though right now you would think differently about me because I'm like pumped. But yesterday we talked about... I do this every morning at 5. Yes, 5 a.m. Central Standard Time. Um, well, Monday through Friday, not weekends. Um, I'll have to look into that. I don't know. Um, okay, so we are, yesterday we learned that anyone who practices righteousness is of Christ, right? So anyone who practices righteousness is of Christ. Keyword practices righteousness, meaning that we turn our rebuke, that we turn from our sin. If we mess up, we don't continue in sin. We're not habitual reckless sinners we everything that we do is on purpose for a purpose for god's glory alone and um christians also love people they love their brothers like that's the last verse that we read in in, um chapter 3 was verse 10 which means if you follow in my righteousness and if you love my people you are of god that's the mark you will know them by their fruits is in matthew so that's what we talked about yesterday and the two commandments remember what we always say love god love people if you take care of those two everything else will follow um and so, let's go to 1 John chapter 3. I actually have, like, dog-eared the author of confusion thing because that person was like, you're spinning scripture, but you have no idea what you're talking about. And I was like, truth is truth. Like, if God says he's not the author of confusion and he's speaking to the church, then he's speaking to us. So, anyways, I have that dog-eared because we're going to do a video on that soon. Um, but, let's read and we're going to get started First John chapter 3, verses 11 through 15, not 14. Sorry about that. Um, for this is a message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We should not be like Cain, who was of the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brother's righteous. Do not be surprised, brothers, that this world hates you. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers. Whoever does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Guys, that is not a feel-good message, but it is all at the same time. Because it says, guess what? If you love Jesus, the world's going to hate you. If you love Jesus and you walk in the truth that he's called you to walk in, the world is going to hate you. That is truth. That is scripture. Like anything else that I've said, you can take it to the bank. There will be people against you. You will not have an easy life. This is not going to be a cakewalk. This is going to be spiritual war. You are fighting a battle for Jesus, your boots on the ground for Jesus. This is not going to be easy, okay? This is this is one going to be the best and the hardest decision of your life to truly follow Jesus. You want to know why? Because it takes sacrifice. It takes laying down every part of people pleasing, of acceptance, of non-rejection. It takes laying every bit of that down to follow in the purpose that God has called you to follow in. And that is not what the church these days is going to tell you. They're going to tell you that if you love Jesus, everything in your life is going to be hunky-dory. If you go to a church like that, you need to find another church because that is not scripture. We are going to face trials. We're going to face tribulations. It's not going to be fun all of the time, but we can have joy in our present circumstance, whether that's like Paul in prison or whether we're going through a mountaintop season because we serve a faithful God who is with us through it all. And if Christ, if Christ being sinless suffered, then we should be willing all the more to suffer for the sake of Christ because we are not sinless. And he came and left heaven to come to earth to save us from our sins. Like why would we not be willing to suffer? for his sake. And so that is our comfort and our peace in times when we do something that the world hates or we say something that the world hates or whatever it is like God is with us. He will not fail us. He's already made it a way through the tribulation. He's already made the way through the trial and he is going to remain faithful to us like he's a good God. And so um, 
Remember, remember we talked about it when we did Philippian, the Philippian study. Our circumstances don't make God good. His character makes God good. We can't, we can't equate our circumstances to the goodness of God. We have to equate God's goodness to his character alone and the truth of who he is. Because if we look at our circumstances as Christians to determine whether our God is good or not, he will never measure up to our standard of good because we are not promised ease and rest fully until we get to heaven and are fully sanctified by God at the end of the age. Okay, so break it down. Y'all, we're about to read some scripture. It's going to be a lot of scripture this morning, and we are going to pour it out. Pour it out. I don't want anybody to be offended. If y'all are giving me gifts, like I truly appreciate it, but I don't want to take away from the message. So I thank you at the end of the live for doing that. I really, 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 truly appreciate it. Um, verse 11 says, um, for this is the message that you have heard from the beginning. Y'all, it's always been like this. It's always been like this, right? That we should love one another. We should not be like Cain, who was of the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brother righteous. It's from the beginning, y'all. Cain and Abel was at the very beginning of Genesis, Genesis chapter 4, actually. And look what happened. Like, it's always been evil against good. It's always been Satan against God. It has always been like that since he rejected God and tried to be like God and got cast out of heaven. And it will always be like that until God comes back, chains him up forever, and takes us to heaven for all of eternity. We're always going to be fighting a spiritual war. And so what God is saying here, it's not just, or what John's saying here, it's not just since Christ came. That this, that this has been going on. It's not just because the world hated Christ, which is the ultimate reason that all, all hate comes to Christians. But it's been like that before even Christ came and died on the cross. Like, it's always been evil versus good. It's always been like that. And it's because the enemy hates God. He left heaven because he wanted to be like God. That's also how he tempted Eve, remember? You'll be like God, knowing good and evil. There is something about living in sin and being in our own sinful nature that makes us want to be like God and makes us want to be the God of our own life. And so when we surrender to God and become like him, we have to surrender that and lay that down every day and realize that we are crucifying ourself, our own God position that we've given ourself and our life and saying like, no, we don't serve ourselves, We don't serve the world. We serve a holy God and we surrender our life to him. That's what it means to truly follow Christ. Christ, you have to die to yourself every single day. Um, so what what verse 12 says is that Cain was of the evil one. Y'all, like it and it's not just murder that makes him of the evil one. It's every part of his life. It wasn't just that one deed because the Bible tells us and is very clear that all sin separates us from the love of God, not just murder. Like all sin separates us from the love of God, whether that's a, a white lie, whatever that is, any sin separates us from the love of God because God doesn't classify sins as, oh, these are sins I'll accept and these are sins that I won't. Like, no, God says that all sin is against me. It is all against God. It is all the work of the enemy. And so Cain was of the evil one before he even committed murder. Like he was walking and serving the enemy before he was, because he was never serving God. And, and Abel was direct opposition to that and was righteous. He was walking with God. Everything that he did was for God. He was trying to please God. He wasn't perfect, but he was trying to please God in everything that he did. And we know that there are, their sacrifices were very different. Like Cain gave some produce. And I, if I remember correctly, Cain gave some produce. It's been a very long time since I read this story. I didn't read it going back. But Cain gave some produce. That's not really a sacrifice because it's not like he chopped down the whole bush or whatever it was like that that was going to produce more it wasn't a real sacrifice um Abel gave the first like what he was supposed to give and it was a blood offering and it is what God accepted because that is what he required of that day and so when God is 
comparing the two, he's saying, no, Abel did it, first of all, from a heart of true sacrifice, right? It was a heart of true sacrifice for God. And Cain was just doing it just to do it, basically. Like, he didn't belong to God. He wasn't sacrificing anything. It wasn't something that was going to put him in a position to have to depend on God, not ultimately. And that's the difference in our two lives as people that look like Christians, people who really are Christians, people who claim to be Christians but don't actually sacrifice anything for God and don't actually give anything up and don't actually crucify themselves and people who are real Christians who actually believe in God and trust in God and understand that it takes a lot more than just repeating a prayer to come to a holy God. Like it takes a lot more to cover my sins than repeating a prayer. It took a sacrifice on a cross from a spotless lamb of God, Jesus Christ himself the third person in the Trinity or the, the second person in the Trinity it took Jesus Christ to die for my sins and while we're on this topic it took just as much blood to cover mine and your sins as it did Jeffrey Dahmer's if he truly was saved as it did anybody else's it took just as much of Jesus's blood to cover our sins as it did anybody else's we are no better we are all sinful. We are all corrupt. We are all doomed for hell until Jesus himself died on the cross and we put our faith and trust in him. So don't think just because you've not murdered or you've not stolen anything or you've not done any of the quote unquote big things that everybody looks at that you're good. No, one sin separates us from the love of God. Doesn't matter what it is. Um, and so... Okay, so anyways, we're continuing on the theme of loving one another. Y'all, I'm so excited. Like, I'm trying not to, like, let my thoughts go wild because I'm like, God, you're just so good and you're so faithful and you show up right on time. You're never late. You're always on time. You're always on your time. You're always on your time. Um, And so we're continuing with the theme of loving one another. Cain wouldn't have murdered Abel if he truly would have loved him. But we can't love people the way we're supposed to if we're not of God. Because God is the one who is love. And so if, when we're walking with God, we will love people the correct way. We will love them the way God, God loves them. And we will see them the way that God sees them. We can't love outside of God. Not truly. Not the way God calls us to love. Not the love your enemy kind of love. Because not the pray for your enemy kind of love. Because that love comes from God. That love is a love that passes understanding. And that only comes from the heart of a Christian who has the Holy Spirit inside of them to lead God and direct them and has been transformed by the gospel. Um, and so we're going to read, I'm just going to read this really quick, but you can write it down. John chapter 13 verses 34 through 35 says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. He says, just as I have loved you. Just as I have loved you. That's why we're called to look for others in scripture. That's why we look for others in scripture. That's why we try to see how we can serve other people. Because Jesus came to earth not to serve himself. He didn't need to die on the cross for his own sins. He came for hours. He's, he sacrificed for hours. He chose us over his own comfort and his own sake. Like he He chose us over that because he knows he knew that's what it would take to redeem us for the glory of God. And so he chose to do that to be able to commune with us for all of eternity. That was a choice that our Jesus made for us to redeem us from our sin. That's the same type of love that, that Jesus is saying right here. You have to have a sacrificial love for other people. It is it goes beyond your selfish your self-righteousness. It goes beyond your um evil desires. It goes beyond your um backbiting self or your gossiping self or whatever it is. Like he says, I want you to love people the way that I love people. And I loved people so much I died on the cross for them. And is it difficult to love people? Yes it is. Did Jesus call people out that he loved? Yes, he did. 
did Jesus also say that there were people that were against him in the Bible and cast out demons from people who tried to come against him? Yes, he did. There is a there is a discernment that has to happen there. But just because somebody's your enemy doesn't mean you don't love them and you don't want to see God transform them for the gospel. Like we still pray for those people. We pray for God to transform them in the gospel of Christ. Like we pray the good news seeps into their heart. The seed is planted. God waters it. It is sprouted forth and it is true and they are transformed for the gospel that's the kind of love that jesus is talking about right here that says you come against me guys if we didn't love our enemies none of us would be here right now because jesus would have been against all of us because we were all enemies of god that is scripture we were go look it up we were all enemies of god you were once all enemies of god if jesus didn't love his enemies none of us would be sitting here having this discussion right now because we would all be doomed to hell he would have just wiped us off and said forget y'all forget everything you're not worth it but he didn't do that and so why do we think that if somebody hurts our feelings we can just never pray for them again and cast them off and never talk to them again, and never try to reach them for the gospel of Christ. That is not what the Bible is. That is not the truth of scripture. We have to love those who persecute us, and we have to pray for them. It doesn't, let me, let me strike, let me, let me put a clause in here. It doesn't mean that you let them in to all the mess that's happening in your life. Do not speak to them about the crap that is happening in your life, and and about your marriage, and about your family, and about all of the things you should be taking to the feet of Jesus. They are not your wise counsel. They are somebody Jesus has put in your path to minister to for the gospel of Christ. They are not the person that you need to go gossiping about to. You should look like Christ to them. That doesn't mean bring your mess into their life and let them speak into that. That is for God and that is for the wise counsel he's put in place. That is not for them to give you advice on, okay? There's a very big difference there. You can reach people for the gospel and not let them into the places that God says he needs to speak into, okay? There's a very big difference there. I'll need to throw that in. Um, Let's read John chapter 8 verses 31 through 47 because I think it's important that we understand this scripture and I literally all the note that I put beside it y'all are gonna laugh at me when I upload these um to patreon but all the note that I put in beside it was whoo like w-h-e-w because it's it's pretty intense um and this version is the NIV but um that's okay uh okay let's read this it's John chapter 8 verses 31 through 47 Y'all better buckle up, okay? (laughs) Because it's intense. Um, And this is Jesus, right? So it says, To the Jews who have believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know truth, and the truth will set you free. I love, Jesus was so cool in the way he talked to people. He was just so direct. Um, And they answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we will be set free? They're arguing with Jesus if you haven't grasped that already. Like the Jews are literally arguing with Jesus. I think that's hilarious. Like the Bible is such a good book to read. I don't know why we try to read anything else because there are so many things in there. There's love stories. There's comedy. There's everything that you need because Jesus is so cool in the way he talks to people. And Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if a son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendant. So yet you are looking for a way to kill me because you have no room for my word. I am telling you what I have seen in the father's presence and you are doing what you have heard from your father. So he's saying like, you're, he's, they're literally saying, these are the Jews and he's saying, we're, we're descendants of Abraham. Like I can just see them with their pride right now. We're descendants of Abraham. And Jesus is like, you're trying to kill me. You know, like that's his response. And this is their answer, guys. Abraham is our father. That's, Abraham is our father, they answered. And here's Jesus. They're like, Abraham's our father. That's their only rebuttal. And here's Jesus. If you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do what Abraham did. As it is, you are looking for a way to kill me. A man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. 
you are doing the works of your own father. Well, I'm sure right now they're very confused because they're like, what is he talking about? We're saying Abraham's our father and he's saying we're doing the works of our own father. I'm sure like they're like, what? And that doesn't make sense. And so they're protesting now. So we, we're going a step further from just stating we're Abraham's um, father. Abraham's our father. We're protesting now. They said, we are not illegitimate children. They protested. The only father we have is God himself. So funny because they're literally looking in the eyes of God in man form, in the form of Jesus. They're literally looking in the eyes of God and they're saying, we belong to God himself. Man, the enemy's so deceitful. And Jesus said to them, Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me for I have come here from God. Man, it gives me chills reading this. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me for I have come here from God. I have not come on my own. God sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father the devil. That's the father that that Jesus was talking about. And you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I'm telling the truth, why don't you believe me? Whoever belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. Mic drop. Mic drop. Jesus. I mean, literally. And it goes on. It goes on. Like, Jesus goes on and he's, he talks about himself and all this kind of stuff. But mic drop, y'all. Mic drop. Jesus says, if you, if God were your father, you would love me for I have come here from God. I've not come on my own. God sent me. That is my new memory verse for this week because we walk with Jesus. And when God sends you into places, you walk in there like God sent you with authority, with boldness, with power, with truth, with the full armor of God on because the enemy is going to be against you. God says, you are doing the works of your own or Jesus says in 41, you are doing the works of your own father. And then in 40 for he says, you belong to your father, the devil. He is saying the father that you belong to is the devil. Want to know why? Because you're looking in the eyes of your savior and you don't even recognize it because the devil's got you so fooled to think that this isn't me because you don't, you don't turn at God's rebuke. You're not doing what Proverbs 1 23 says. You're not turning at my rebuke. God says, you're not turning at my rebuke. So I'm not going to pour my spirit out on you. I'm not going to make my words known to you because you're not turning away from from your self-righteous, pompous, I'm a better Christian than you attitude, and you're holding on to everything that you can do in this world to be of God, and you're not saying, God, I surrender to you. I surrender to the plan that you have. I surrender to the purpose that you have. I am giving it all to you so that I can see you clearly, and they missed Jesus because of it. Guys, they missed Jesus because of it. All of these people claiming to be Christians that are tearing us down on a daily basis when we speak truth, they are missing Jesus. They are missing who Jesus is because God sent me here. I am here on mission for God by authority of God. And when you do everything, regardless of how you do it, to tear down somebody who is on mission for God, you are not walking with God because God says, if God were your father, you would love me. Do you want to know what people do when they look into your eyes when you are a child of God? They are looking into the eyes of Jesus because you walk with the Holy Spirit. God says, I have poured my spirit into you. You are walking with me. And so when people who come against you look into your face and they talk about you and they slander you and they hate you, they are hating Jesus in you because they are looking into the eyes of a redeemed child of God. And that is 
exactly what the enemy is up against. The reason you are facing hate and persecution and trials and tribulations and headwind when you are walking in whatever God has called you to walk in is because you are they are looking into the eyes of the purpose God has created for you and the Holy Spirit inside of you. And the enemy will do anything he can to thwart that purpose. Somebody said, oh, well, he's not omnipresent, so he can't be anywhere. You're a dang right he's not because he's not God. But guess what he has? A lot of demons and enemies and spiritual beings that are working on his behalf throughout the whole world to try to distract you and keep you in cycles of sin so that you miss what God has called you to do here on this earth. Don't miss Jesus because of your own self-righteous opinions. Don't miss Jesus, period. End of discussion. That is what the Bible says. He says, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. We belong to sin until we belong to God because we are born into sin. And I am like, I mean, I am telling you every time I have a morning like this on the live, every single time. You can take it to the bank that the enemy is going to do something. He's going to do something through my workplace. He's going to do something through whatever somebody that I encounter on a daily basis because it makes him angry that we are walking towards Jesus and the calling that we have on our life. Do you want to know why? Because he stepped out of heaven and he knows what his future is. He knows the scriptures better than you do. I bet he could quote them better than you can. He stepped out of heaven and he knows where he's going. And he's trying to take as many people away away from God as he can. Not because he cares about you. Not because he wants you to just be with him. Because he's against God. It's not about you. You're just the middle person. God loves you. That's why he's fighting for you. Or God would have just said, forget it. I'm done with it. But God wanted us. That's why we're still here. It's because of God's sovereignty and God's purpose and God's love. The enemy doesn't want you. He doesn't care about you. He's not doing this because you have purpose for him. He's doing this because he hates God. And so when you are of God, that is why you are being attacked by the enemy. Because where God is, darkness will always try to overtake light. But it will not. We know the end of the story. We know that we win. And so we can have confidence that whatever room God sends us into, if God's the one who sent us, he is there with us. And it doesn't matter what anybody says. It doesn't matter what you face. It doesn't matter if you're like Moses and you stutter. It doesn't matter if you have been like Paul and you murdered people in the past. If God redeems you, you are walking in the purpose that he's called you to walk in. His power is your power. Your weakness is his strength. When you fall, he can pick you back up. He is the purpose that you're walking in. Walking towards Jesus will mean headwind. People are going to be against you. Jesus said it himself right here. And I don't think we're going to be able to go any further because I'm running out of time. But y'all, I'm telling you, I am telling you. You better be ready. You better be ready. Because if you are walking towards Jesus, there is enemies all around. And they are trying to, to steal, kill, and destroy. They are. It is, it, is, it is the purpose for which they are still here. They are trying to steal, kill, and destroy. And we have to lean on God. And we have to be faithful. And we have to say, God, I don't matter. I don't care who comes against me. I don't care what they say. I'm walking in the purpose that you've called me to walk in. This is not about me. It is not for my comfort. This is not for my happiness. This is for the joy of knowing that I have served you because you are the one who died for me. And you are the one who gripped me out of the depths of hell and out of darkness into light. You're the one who redeemed my soul. And I'm going to read two verses that are um, speaking on verses 11 and 12. And y'all, like, this is as far as we're getting today. Because that was just so good. I could not read John what John said um, there. Let's see. Psalm 38, verse 20. Psalm 38, verse 20 says, Those who render evil for good accuse me because I follow after good. Those who render me evil for good accuse me because I 
follow after good. What's the next one? The next one is Proverbs 29 verse 10. It says, bloodthirsty men hate one who is blameless and seek the life of the upright. Bloodthirsty men hate the one who is blameless and seek the life of the upright. When we walk in righteousness, guys, you can bank on the fact that the enemy is after you. You can bank on the fact he can't get your soul, but he will do anything he can to quench your purpose. He will do anything he can to stop the message of God from being spread because it's about the hate that he has for God. It is not about you. It's not about how much he cares about you. It is about the fact that he hates God. That is the purpose for everything the devil tries to do on this earth. He is against God, and if it's for God, then he's against it. And so when you become a child of God, he is against you. And if you don't believe that that God allows the enemy to tempt you and to and to and to put things in your path, you need to read the book of Job. Because God let the enemy touch everything in Job's life except for his life. Everything. From his health, from his family. He lost his children. He lost everything he owned. He lost his he lost his health. He lost almost everything. And you know, everyone in his circle was telling him that he must not be of Christ. Because of the persecution he was facing. And Job argued with God and prayed to God and was mad at God and, and was all of these things. He went through so many emotions. And people don't talk about that part of Job. But if you go read Job, Job went through so many emotions, wondering why God had forsaken him and all of this kind of stuff. But the fact is, is God never forsaken. God never had forsaken him. God was with him the whole time. Now, why why he allowed Job to go through that? That that's between that's a God thing, and I have to trust that God is sovereign. It doesn't make sense, but what we know is that in the end, God blessed Job with more than he even had, and that is not a promise that we're going to get. We don't. We're not always promised a double portion of blessing. We're not always promised that. We're promised that we receive eternal life in heaven with Jesus, and that's enough. That's enough for me. If God takes away everything, or if God allows the enemy to take away everything that I own, everything, this is this is where we have to be, okay? And this is a hard statement to, to say, and this is the last thing that I'll, I'll talk about. But we have to come to the place where Jesus is enough, to be okay with whatever God's called us to walk in. We have to come to the place where Jesus is really, truly, and wholly enough. Like, God, if you take away everything from my life, my friends, my family, my possessions, my health, if you take away, allow the enemy to take away everything from my life, the fact that I get you is enough. It's enough because you don't do anything on accident and you work any, everything for my good and your glory. It's all for our good and God's glory. And so we have to know and understand that Jesus is enough. He's enough. That's just the, that's just truth, guys. Like our eternity with heaven is worth anything that we go through on earth. That is our double portion. That is our forever. And I, I honestly can't wait to get there. I really cannot wait to get there. The more I walk with Jesus, the more I cannot wait to be in heaven with him. Regardless if I don't if I don't get to do or be anything that I've set out to be on this earth, it is about being with him. The reason I do anything on this earth is about walking with him and experiencing him more. And so we have to get to that place where it's about Jesus is better. He's better than anything else. He's better than all of it. He's better than any of it. He is enough in and of himself. God is enough. Whew. I'm going to pray because I know a lot of people will want to hop off and then I'm going to stay on for just a minute because I there may be questions or something. God, I just... 
man, you're just so good. Like, mind-blowingly good and faithful. God, I pray for boldness and strength and perseverance and endurance to walk the path that you've called us to walk in, whatever that may look like. God, help us to realize that you are enough. You in and of yourself are enough. You are the prize. You are the goal. You are the mark. And this world is so fleeting and it's it's so corrupt and it breaks my it breaks my heart, God. And I just pray that, I just pray for all of those who don't understand who you are or are against you. God, open their eyes. Reveal yourself to them. God, call them so strongly that they wouldn't even be able to go to sleep tonight without giving their life up to you. I I just, I pray for Every person that has come and shown up to listen, God, you are good and you are sovereign and you make no mistakes for anybody who entered or exited, God. And I pray that you would hide us behind the cross. Hide our words behind the cross, God. Forgive me where I failed you. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, Man, that was so good. And for all of you that were very, if any of you were very upset about the monster energy drink thing, I truly am sorry if that offended any of you. I really am. Like, I I, I genuinely am. And the reason I won't drink them anymore, I mean, it is weird that, like, some of the things are, are, could be not coincidence. Um, but I won't drink them anymore. And I told my group in Patreon this, like, I'm not, I'm not drinking them anymore because it did offend so many people. And like the Bible does tell us if it calls somebody to stumble, it's not worth it. And so if, if drinking that drink is going to make anybody think that I'm not of Jesus, then what's the use of it? I probably don't need to be drinking it anyway. And all of the people who nitpick apart my diet, guys, I have lived my whole life with eating disorder after eating disorder, thinking that I had to be some kind of stick figure type person or whatever. And God has redeemed me so much from that. And I I see a naturopath. I know that I don't need to be drinking them. Do I think that we have just as many toxins probably on our fruit in the grocery store? Yes, I do. Because I think that America and is trying to make us sick so that they can give us medicine that we have to pay for to make us better. I fully believe that. Um, if you don't, then you need to open your eyes because it's all about money. Um, but, like, nobody, I, I would be willing to bet that no, no person who commented has a fully clean, fully organic, fully garden produced diet and so it's it's just I won't drink them anymore because it hurt so many people that I did but it's just don't let the enemy get you distracted by somebody eating flaming hot cheetos or something like that you have no idea what the other 90 percent of the day looked like you have no idea you see about this this much of a person's life on social media and um just be aware of that. Like, like not condemning, you know, give advice, whatever, if you feel the need to. But be aware of how you're, as Christians, how our comments are take could be taken. Or if that person is going through a hard time. Or if they're still struggling with an eating disorder or whatever. Like, just be aware of how your comments could be taken. And how it could be perceived on the other end. And the harm that it could do more than good. So, um, anyway. Um, Ashley, everybody is offended by Monster because apparently it is very, um, is, uh, anti, very anti-Christ. It's like a movement from 2014 from what I looked up. There was this lady who came out and said that the, the M is actually a 666 in Hebrew, um, 
which is the mark of the beast. By the way, you can't take the mark of the beast by accident. You're going to have to take the mark of the beast on purpose. So it's not something you can just drink the drink and that's what you do. And then the, the statement that they had at first was unleash the beast, I think was their like slogan or whatever. And then they say that the O in monster is, an, is a cross. And so when you turn it upside down, it's upside down. The O is actually the phi symbol, which means energy from what I researched, which it is an energy drink, so that makes sense. Um, and then the M is supposed to be a claw marks that are in the shape of an M. I know, I don't know how else they could have made claw marks look like an M. I mean, I'm not saying that it's coincidence. I'm not saying that it's not. I know that we live in a world that is run by the enemy, basically. So, I mean, he can use anything, but... Um, it also, like, previously, the, some of the symbols meant, um, the F word. So, the maker supposedly made it to represent satanic Starbucks logo. Yes, exactly, with the Starbucks logo, people say that's satanic, too. But, guys, like, if we're gonna say that, you literally can't eat, drink, buy anything from anywhere. You're, you're fully... You, you are fully restricted to growing your own garden and sewing your own clothes. Like, do not order anything else off of Amazon. Delete TikTok. Delete Instagram. Delete Facebook. Like, you can't support any company because they're all of the enemy. <laughs> and the snake in the hospital logo. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's, it's just... It, it was crazy. Like, God has already won. Yes, exactly. And, um, yeah, I've never heard of any of this. You have to become Amish, really. Truly. Yes. The Who logo. The, um, this is the devil's program. I don't trust anything anymore. I think we should go by the Holy Spirit, not people. You're very right. I wish people looked that deep in the Bible. Exactly. That's exactly what I was saying. <laughs> like, I was saying, like, everybody was so concerned about that and remembered something from 2014, you guys. Like, every article that I looked up, there hasn't been anything, really, since 2014. I think there was one thing from 2018 that I saw. Y'all, 20, that long ago? I was, I was barely out of high school in 2014. Like, we remember all of that, and we've had all the same time to study scripture, and I would be willing to bet that most people don't have that much of the scripture memorized. Like, it's so crazy how deceptive the enemy is. I'm so glad you're here. Yep, graduated in 2011. Me too. Yes, I graduated into, I'm 30 years old. I guess I've never said that. I'm 30, though, yes. Um, how do you feel about cursing and drinking? I think that culturally it is not it is not the mark of a Christian. Um, culturally, cu cursing. Now, drinking, the Bible says, drinking is a whole different story. Like, drinking says, do not drink to get drunk. However, there is a temptation there to continue to drink. Um, and it does talk about, like, people who teach and preach the gospel and our elders in the church I think not to drink I don't know I, I read some of it I have an addictive personality and so I just choose to stay away from alcohol because I think that it could take me further than it would be for my good so girls stop why are you bringing up age <laughs> I didn't tell y'all to give me your age I'm just telling you how long have you been studying the bible it's inspiring um I have, I grew up in church, so I grew up, I guess this is turning into like a QA. and a so if you're not interested in learning more about my life, then we're done with our Bible study for the day, but we will be back in the morning at 5 a.m. Um, I grew up in church, so I grew up um, Landmark Missionary Baptist, for those of you who live like in the Bible Belt area, and <clears throat> it was, um, I guess like the ground of my faith. However, uh, God called me out of being in that when I got married, and it's it's 
I, there are great people in that work. And I, my whole family still goes to the Landmark Missionary Baptist Church. And so I feel like there are saved people in any religion. Um, they do believe Bible. They do believe scripture. Um, and that's what a church should do. However, um, I realize that like, I don't know. My faith has grown so much more as God has led me to the place that he wanted me to be. Like, I need to be clear about that. Like, it's not about the church. It's about where God leads you to. Because if you're walking with Jesus, he's going to lead you to the place where he's going to feed you spiritually and where and where you need to be for your purpose and what he's called you to do. And so now I'm actually, we went to a Southern Baptist church when I got married. And now I'm actually Congregational Methodist, which I don't, I don't claim a, like, I don't, it's more non-denominational to me. Like, I don't claim a quote-unquote title. I, I didn't even know it was a Congregational Methodist Church, to be honest with you, because I, I just looked for all of the truths of Scripture and what and what Scripture says and what doctrine says, and that's where we, that's where we go. And actually, it's with my husband's family. And so, um, anyway, so that's the church that we go to. And um, I have been... I got saved when I was young. I was probably, I don't know. I don't know the date. I didn't write it down. Like that used to bother me so bad at times because I would be like, I can't really be a Christian if I don't know the date. And that's, that's so dumb. But, um, I don't really remember the date. I was young and I was, I remember sitting in front of my vanity and just giving up. It wasn't like a prayer that I repeated or anything like that. Like, I just remember, like, I had been wrestling with God calling me to just release my life to Him and surrender my life to Him. And I remember I was sitting at my vanity, and I was like, I give up. I'll have to do a whole, there's a whole, like, previous part to this because I thought that I was saved when I really wasn't. And that's a hilarious story. But anyway, like, looking back, it's hilarious. But, um... So when I was sitting there, I, I just remember like just saying, God, I give up. I can't, I can't do this anymore. Like, I just want you. Like, I don't know what that looks like. I don't know what to say. And immediately it was like this peace that was just like, it was just peace. And that's all that I can explain. And my life hasn't been perfect since then. It's looked like a bunch of ups and downs, obviously, because um, it's been a lot. It's been probably 15 years ago. I don't think I was driving. So I was probably around like 13, 14. And so, um, anyway, <laughs> uh, I really started studying the scripture, like really, really, really diving into the scripture on and off because I'd have, I'd have seasons of like, you know, not really reading my Bible because of things that happened in my life and that I let come in between me and, and the purpose that God had for me. I started really studying and digging into the scripture when I moved actually to my church at, at, at Bethlehem in Laurel. Um, when I moved there and, and started going to church there, um, in 2020, I joined the praise team. So I sing on the praise team there. And, um, anyway, like I started getting a Christian community that really made me want to know more about God. And they would bring up questions that were interesting to me. Like, you know, like, I want to know what God says about that. And so we would talk about it, you know, and I would go study scripture. And some of those questions people don't like to talk about, but some of those things were like predestination versus free will. And they're not like, it, to me, it's not black and white in the scripture. And I think we have to understand that God is sovereign and, and we're never going to understand exactly how all of the pieces of who he is works. And so, um, anyway, I was like, I've never even like thought about that. Like I've never even looked into that. And that's the kind of stuff that I'm interested in, in like my personal Bible study is like digging into all of the different scriptures and looking at the context of it and, and what were the original words and, and different things like that. And so when I started studying scripture like that, like, finding things that were of God that were deep that God himself has to be the one to reveal them to you because we can't understand it in our own thought like when I really started seeking out those types of things and looking into revelation and and looking at not from a place of fear but like from a place of God I really truly want to know who you are like I want to know I want to just learn more about you through the process of understanding how you inspired scripture. You know, like it really changed when I was like, God, I want to know, like,
like about you? Like, how are you, how did you inspire this? Like, what do you look like? Like what, who is the God that I actually serve? Because a lot of Christians don't know. Like they know what a preacher has told them, but for themselves, they don't know. And so when I started looking into scripture that way and like really diving into like, God is really cool. Like he's so cool in the way that he orchestrated scripture and the way that all of it pieces together. And like, there's all this back and forth between like how Jesus is seen in the old Testament versus the new and like all of the ways that he sat up, sat up all of the sacrifice stuff. Like there's no way man created this. Like when you really start studying about who God is, you understand and you realize that there is no way this is not inspired by God because it is so detailed and intricate. And people will say, well, um, scripture count contradicts itself. I keep getting emails, so I'm swiping up. People, um, contradict like the Bible contradicts itself no it doesn't you just have to look at the context you have to look at like who Jesus is talking to at that time like that person telling me that God is God does confuse people yes he does he confuses non-believers if they're trying to work against his purpose but but the Bible says that for the church, God is not the author of confusion and we are of the church. He's not going to confuse his people. He's going to make clear what he wants you to do in your life. Maybe not immediately, but the more you seek him, he will make it clear. And so, um, he's also not going to call you to do something and then confuse you with doing something else. Like he, if he calls you to do it, like, and you have peace with it, then you need to do that thing. And so, um, Yes, we have to look at context of scripture, but those are some of the ways that people will say like scripture contradicts itself, but it really doesn't. Like scripture is truth. And as far as, I'm not even reading the, the comments, but as far as like the, I am about to have to get off, but as far as like the predestination versus free will thing, like there are scripture that people use to support both things, right? Like there's scripture that people use to support both things. And, um, Honestly, I think that we can disagree on that and still love Jesus because I don't think that God gave us a black and white answer for it as far as this is exactly how people are called. This is exactly how people are saved. This is exactly who I'm going to save. This is exactly this. Like, it's not like he doesn't give us a full book aligned with names. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so we just have to say, like, God, you're sovereign and like, just show me the truth of who you are. Show me who you are. And he will do that. And I just think that that's just not something that we should spend most of our time arguing about because it's not, it doesn't negate who God is. Like that fact does not negate the, the goodness of God, whether you believe either side, like it, God is good. He is sovereign. We can agree on that part. Then we can just agree that his truth is truth. And he says that he sent his son to save the whole world and his blood was enough to cover the whole world. And that's what I believe. And so anyways, please tell me you're, you're single or have friends on fire like you. <laughs> that's hilarious. No, I'm not single. I'm married happily with, of, I've been with my husband for like almost 11 years, <laughs> but, um, I am old too, according to all of my students. So I don't have many single friends. <laughs> That's hilarious, though. That made me laugh. God cannot be put in a formula. You're so right. Like, his, the Bible actually tells us, like, stop trying to basically figure me out. I'm way above your, th your thought process. Because he says, my ways are above your ways and my thoughts are above your thoughts. Like, stop trying to nail down everything about me. Like, just read scripture and look for who I am and I'll take care of the rest. Like, I'm the one that has to be, make it known to you anyway. So, <laughs> just trust that I'm just going to give you everything that you need to fully believe in me. Yeah, people, scripture will be used to, for people's narrative. You're so right. Just hang on to that scarlet thread. Yeah. What is the Congregational Methodist? Um, Congregational Methodist, we, I, I really, I'm not really sure the differences. Like I said, I just align it with scripture and doctrine. Like I don't study doc, oh, I don't study like churches. I just am like, is the church that I go to, does it preach truth? Does it preach not prosperity gospel? Because no. And do they dunk in baptism? Because that is scripture. Um, and then it's because it represents a burial. And then, um, 
like salvation, as far as the salvation process. What does that look like? You know, do we believe that God is sovereign? Do we believe that he's good? Does it align with the doctrine of scripture? If it aligns with all of that, then that's what we believe. But a congregational Methodist is, from what I have gathered, more closely related to um, Southern Baptist. But I know that United and Congregational are different. I just don't know the exact ways. (laughs) Thank you. What religion? I'm not. I'm. I'm not working out after this, so that's why I'm staying on to answer some of y'all's questions because I never do stay on. I feel protected by God today. I guess. Um, when we get religion and domination and confused, domination is a different way to worship God. Yes, like it's. It's about a relationship with Jesus. It's not about how you classify yourself. I get the question all the time: Am I a Calvinist? And I'm like, I don't classify with being a Calvinist. I don't call myself anything but a follower of Jesus Christ. So I believe things that are me and Jesus have worked out together, and that is. Well, like, what does that matter? Why is that so important? You know, like, if if it's truth, then it's truth. It shouldn't matter who, what, or who we classify with. I think John Piper has some great stuff. I listen to a lot of his Ask Pastor John things. Um, but I don't call myself a Calvinist. No, I don't call myself anything. I call myself a follower of Jesus. Um, Yes. Jesus said, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws them. I'm struggling with life and feel like I'm falling. Um, just turn to Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Teaching can be so spiritually demanding. You're very right. Is it chill when you get listening to worship music? The Holy Spirit. Um, I mean, I guess it could be. I mean, I said, I said earlier, like I get chill. I got chills reading the scripture because it was just so good. Like, it's just so good. It's like, it's just, mm, it's so good. I guess it depends on the song you're listening to. Is the song scripture based or is it like a feel good song? Because there are, there is worship music that is more close to secular music than worship music. It's more about how we feel than it is about the God that we serve. So, didn't realize that was a man asking, though. (laughs) Surrendering our whole selves, yeah. Exactly, like, why people trying to figure out the rapture date. Yeah, that didn't work, obviously, because we're still here. Yes, check the church and make sure it aligns with scripture. I'm so bad at keeping up with these messages. Do you do Bible studies on TikTok regularly? Yes, I do. I do Bible studies um, Monday through Friday at 5 a.m. Central Standard Time. So. Her battlefield is a mind book. Yeah. Do you believe in October 4th? Is that a new date that they're saying? Um, I didn't believe in September 18th or whatever they were saying, so... Yeah, I literally, like, I cry, I cry frequently because of how good God is and has been to me. I'm in um, Central Standard Time. Okay, wait. I almost muted to my own accident. Yep, I speak Jesus for sure. There's something about the name of Jesus, too. And I've t- I've talked about that. Like, even saying God should bring us, like, awe because of who God is and how awesome he is. Yep. That's awesome that you're free. That's wonderful. Okay. I'm about to... I'm about to hop off, you guys. Um... I'm going to hop off, and it's 6.13, so I've got to go take a shower and get my life together before I wake up my little boy. So, anyway, Bible study notes will be posted. The notes from this morning, which is only one slide, but it's a full slide, will be posted in Patreon. Um, It's a dollar for all the Bible study notes that we go through on this app. So, anyway, um, 
I just wanted to let y'all know that that before I get off because several people have asked and that's the emails that I've been getting. So anyways, I love you guys and I hope that y'all have the best day. I, um, I will be posting. I'm kind of behind on posting my lives on YouTube, but they'll be posted on YouTube um, by Saturday. I'm going to try to get it done because I know a lot of people like to go into Patreon and get the notes and then go back and and like watch the YouTube videos. I just hadn't gotten around to it yet. So anyways, um, I love y'all and I hope that y'all have the best day and I'm about to upload that right now for those of you who want that and are in that group. So I love y'all and I hope y'all have the best day and I will see y'all tomorrow at 5 a.m. Central Standard Time. Bye guys.